thanks everyone for attending today. Um, so this project is called Novelty Guided Target Selection for Mars Rovers. And this is a collaboration um, between UMD, JPL and ASU, um, where I actually did my PhD. And uh, the PI on this project is Kiri Wagstaff here shown in the, in the picture. Kiri is also in the audience, I think, and so is Stephen Liu on our team. Um, so maybe they'll chime in at some point too. Um, yeah, so we have we have quite a large team that's worked on this over the last about year. Um, and uh, so I'll just share where we are on that. So um, this project is really looking to figure out how do we start to use computers or use machine learning to help identify unusual objects on Mars. So one of these objects, um, as an example, is what's called the Pettigrove point for an object debris, um, which is this little kind of flake of material um, that initially stood out as being quite unusual and maybe even thought to be a part of the rover or something that had flaked off um, and turned out just to be sort of a, uh, an unusual looking rock. Um, or another common example is these iron meteorites that we found actually in many places on the surface. So one example is this egg rock iron meteorite um, shown here. And so our question really guiding this research is, can, can the rovers identify interesting objects on their own um, or do they have to be completely guided by the science team? Uh, and one example of the rover already doing this is with uh, the software called Aegis, Autonomous Exploration for Gathering Increased Science. So Aegis has been used on MSL since 2016 um, and has acquired many targets. And basically Aegis uses uh, the NavCam images as a source image and decides where to point the ChemCam instrument and obtain uh, compositional spectra for the target of its choice. Um, and so that spectrum looks something like this. So the way Aegis works is that it takes uh, a pre-planned image. So it has a, an Aegis specific source image with NavCam. And then it uses an algorithm called Rockster to identify candidate targets in the image. And then for each of those candidate targets, it computes uh, several different features or properties like the intensity on average, the shape, the perimeter, um, different features like that. And then it filters some out based on um, a, a sort of a predefined set of filters. So these might be based on the size, it might be based on how far away they are from the rover, um, things like that. And then using those targets, it ranks them against some predefined science priorities, such as we want really large, really bright targets, something like that. Um, so really it's computing a distance of each of those features to this target signature and ranking them based on uh, this metric. And then once it chooses, um, once it's defined its top targets, it figures out where to aim um, the instrument and acquires uh, the ChemCam libs uh, raster and target or uh, spectrum. And so Aegis has been very successful so far. It's led to increased use of ChemCam. Um, this chart here shows in the sort of first half what the uh, ChemCam usage looked like before Aegis was deployed and then after sort of showing this marginal gain um, of the use of ChemCam after Aegis. But we still have this question remaining of, you know, Aegis is really good at finding targets that the science team has said they're interested in based on these signatures. But what about features that we don't expect to find, such as this um, foreign object debris or meteorites or other unusual objects, uh, what we really call novel geology? So the goal of this project is to see if we can incorporate novelty ranking in, into this logic of Aegis. So instead of ranking targets against predefined science priorities, 
can we also rank them based on their novelty compared to what the rover has previously seen? And so the way this looks is um, sort of, we, we kind of insert this into the existing structure of Aegis. So we have our, our source image, um, which for Aegis is this nav cam image. We still identify the targets with Rockster and um, we extract different features for it maybe. We also look at using just the pixel intensities. Um, and then this is sort of the point where Aegis branches off and does its ranking, but we also are exploring now this branch of running novelty ranking algorithms. So we rank each target based on its novelty, and then we output the top selections. So here, this is showing kind of what our qualitative evaluation result will look like, where we have the source image. We have, in some cases, in kind of this yellow gold here, a predefined um, reference novel target that somebody on the team uh, found to be interesting. And we have uh, where these detections are from various algorithms um, that are ranking novelty. And these novelty ranking algorithms are considering the, the novelty of each target with respect to either all previous souls or some defined range of, of prior souls where Saul is a Martian day, I should say. So the first step of this, as I said, is to identify targets with Rockster. And this, this algorithm was really developed to run on board in a fast way with limited resources. So it, it's not you know, a perfect rock finder, um, but it, it does pretty great for what it's designed for. So it, it's really looking for edges, um, closing those contours, and um, using some different computer vision techniques to, to find these candidate targets. And then um, the next step is taking these targets and extracting some feature representation that we use for the models. For, um, for sort of the most simple one, we use these raw pixel intensities. So these are just the pixel values. We resize the targets to a standard size of 64 by 64 so that we can have a um, equivalent length feature vector for each image um, since the size of them can vary. We also look at using um, statistics based on the intensity. So this is um, some simple kind of statistical features. And so the dimensionality of this uh, feature vector is much smaller. It's seven dimensional compared to the images where we have over 4,000 um, pixel values. And then we also look at the uh, intensity and shape combined features. So again, we have some of these um, statistical features based on the pixel intensity, but we also include some characteristics of the shape, um, such as the area or the um, semi-major axis, semi-minor axis. And these are actually all features that are computed by Aegis already. Um, but Aegis actually usually just uses the uh, average intensity and in the area. Um, so the dimensionality of that feature vector is uh, nine. And then once we have these feature vectors, we can pass them into a variety of different novelty ranking algorithms. So um, one sort of perspective on novelty is scoring the novelty based on the reconstruction error. So um, with PCA, for example, to do this, we compute the K principal component vectors, we project the data onto that uh, principal subspace, and then from this reduced dimension representation, we reproject or reconstruct the original image and look at what was lost. So we quantify um, just the Euclidean distance between those uh, two, between the input and the reconstructed image. So the idea is that novel information won't be captured in, um, in this feature representation and will be lost in the projection. Um, and we also use an algorithm called DMUD, which was developed by Kiri Wagstaff. And uh, the idea here, DMUD stands for um, Discovery Based on Eigenbasis Modeling of Uninteresting Data, I think. Um, and so the idea here is that it's similar to PCA in that you're computing the principal components or doing SVD, um, but you're computing that 
um, singular value decomposition based on uh, a data set of prior selected novelties, not just the prior images or the prior targets, so that we're selecting um, basically what's different from what we've already selected. So we're trying to select diverse uh, targets. The other mode of novelty that we look at is um, based on distance from a background. So um, we compute, we, we use this method called the Rx method or Reach Ali, um, which is very common in remote sensing actually, where we compute the Mahalanobis distance between um, our sample and a, a distribution that's computed based on um, the previous data. So the mean uh, and covariance matrix. Um, and then we also evaluate a local version of that, local Rx, which doesn't consider prior information, but it just looks at that distance between uh, a pixel and its surrounding window. Um, and then uh, finally, we look at novelty in terms of sparse, sparsely populated areas of the feature space. So uh, for this, we use the isolation forest to, uh, which basically works by constructing many random trees and then looking at the distance from the root, to, or basically looking at how many times, how many splits you need to make in order to isolate a sample. And so if you have to make fewer splits to isolate a sample, then it's probably an outlier because it's much more different than the other um, samples in the data set. Whereas uh, requiring many more splits or a long um, distance from root to leaf uh, would be an inlier uh, because it's you know more similar to other samples. So then when we output our novel selections, we sort all the targets based on their novelty score by each of these algorithms. And then we select the top n targets where usually we're looking at n equals one or two. So the top one or two targets, because this is usually what uh, Aegis has allocation for in the rover schedule. And what we find is that um, there are some instances where the novelty ranking algorithms and Aegis select the same thing. So here are two examples of that, where um, the PCA detections or the PCA selections and the Aegis selections are shown here, along with all of the candidate targets and the reference novel targets. Um, and so you can see that they, they both are choosing the same top target in this case. Uh, but there are a lot of other instances where the novelty detection methods are selecting something new. So in these cases, um, you know, Aegis selects this kind of part of maybe sand here, whereas um, PCA selects the reference novel target. Um, and same here in this image on the right, we see that Aegis selects um, something over here, but not these reference novel targets that are selected by PCA. And so we looked at, um, in our, we have a paper that was in iCyrus in 2020 on this, and uh, where we looked at 28 scenarios where we had a reference novel target that was defined by um, Raymond Francis on our team. And um, we compared, or we basically scored for each algorithm, including Aegis, how many uh, of its top two choices were a match with the reference novel target. And we found that all of our algorithms prioritize the novel target uh, more frequently than Aegis did, um, given a certain representation. And so and I should say that Aegis is not designed to find novelty. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but if we're looking at how can we use novel, novelty ranking algorithms to prioritize um, you know, complementary targets or new targets that Aegis might not be finding um, that can help uh, increase the science return from these instruments, uh, I think we really showed that here. So, um, Another, another approach that we looked at or another goal of this project was to also say, um, how would color or multispectral information also help finding novel uh, geology? So here we have, um, we've been using these grayscale navcam images, but what if we had color 
um, or multispectral like we have from mass cam. So can we uh, help, could this help find targets that are novel in composition too? Um, and so uh, this is done on mass cam for MSL, but on Mars 2020, the nav cam will also have uh, color images. Um, I'm kind of running out of time here, so I'll, I'll try to go quickly through these results. But um, so basically what we find is that Rockster is able to find more candidate targets in the mass cam color images. But because Rockster is actually taking these color images and collapsing them um, into a grayscale image before finding the targets, this is actually probably due to um, the increased resolution that we have with uh, mass cam compared to nav cam, um, or maybe just different lighting conditions or viewing angles. But in order to isolate the effects of the, oh, sorry, I should <laughs> describe these images. So here, this is an example of um, the Lebanon and Littleton meteorites here uh, on the surface. And this is showing that um, some of the candidate targets from Rockster are on the meteorites in the color image, but they aren't found in the NavCam image. Um, and so really the algorithms never have the opportunity to rank them with the NavCam image. So in order to isolate the effects of color or multispectral, multispectral information on the novelty ranking algorithms, we took uh, color and or we took mass cam observations where we had a color and a, a multispectral six band observation. Um, and then we also collapsed that color image into grayscale by averaging. So we for, for all these experiments now we can do, we can look at the grayscale, the three band color and the multispectral six band results. And we find um, kind of mixed results so far. So, um, in, in some images, we see that all that the target, the reference novel target is found in all of these um, spectral inputs or in all of these source images. Um, so the first column here is grayscale, second column is color, and third column is multispectral. Um, but of course, we're only showing three bands of it. Um, so in this example of Lorraine, uh, we see a float rock um, that's detected by, by all of these algorithms. And um, bringing back this Lebanon and Littleton meteorite, again, we see that um, using grayscale, color, or multispectral, um, the algorithms are kind of picking similar targets here. Um, in some cases, such as with this uh, float rock called Sparkle, we see that none of the algorithms are selecting it. Um, I should also say that, you know, some of the Rockster targets or the candidate targets that it's considering are also pretty small, um, not really like a good target covering the whole rock. Um, and again, here's another example where none of the source images or algorithms um, resulted in a detection. And here I'm showing in this circle the mustard dialin meteorite. It's really tiny um, in the top corner of the image here. In some cases, though, we do see that multispectral enables detection of some targets that weren't detected in the grayscale or color. Um, and one example here is some of these float rocks, uh, including the Quimby target, which is this bigger float rock here. Um, we see that it, it wasn't detected in the grayscale or color, but was detected in multispectral. Um, so to summarize our, our findings from this so far, the we do find that more targets are found in the mass cam images by Rockster, but probably not because of definitely not because of the color information. It's more due to the increased resolution. Um, color and multispectral information may help us find additional novel targets, but we're still doing more experiments to um, try to quantify that marginal benefit. But Really, Mars is pretty dusty, and I, I think these other source images are probably more helpful where um, we have less dusty surfaces, where we can actually see different things in the multispectral, um, because you know the the sensing depth of these instruments is is kind of not getting past the dust layer. Um, 
And so next, so far these experiments, we've only looked at scoring it based on the single source image. So we're actually in the multispectral experiments, not considering the prior targets yet, um, but that's our next step. Um, and we're also doing some benchmarking experiments uh, to characterize how much time and memory these different algorithms uh, will require on board since that is an important trade off here, uh, given the limitations of the rover onboard computer. So I will stop here and take questions for the rest of our time. Thanks for your attention.